What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and we are back down here to talk about... Um, what are we here to talk about? P Valley. Yeah, we talked about P Valley. All right. So this is, I think, episode three. The episode was actually pretty good. I, roulette. I keep writing rebellious. Roulette. She's a problem. She is a problem. That girl is going to be a problem. Anyway, she's in the back dancing for some guy, right? She's booty, butthole, naked. And he gives her money and she gives him fellatio. When we know that is against the rule, rule number 735 or whatever, rule number 735.689, don't be sucking in the damn champagne room. Mercedes isn't making as much money as Roulette is. She got a bag full of money, but they don't know. Well, Mercedes used to do that in the back too, right? Didn't Mercedes used to do some stuff in the back for a little extra change? Mercedes is on the phone with this man, um, Coach, I think his name, right? Coach, I think that's what his name was. Well, she says that she wants to see him. Um, he's going to give her $10,000. She needs some money. She's going to give $10,000. She said she wants to get his wife's approval first. Um, and so he was like, oh, okay, all right. And then the next scene, we see Terika driving up to the church where her grandmother is. And she's asking for... Um, food bank boxes and then the grandmother comes over there and she's like what are you doing here and she was like she didn't have any um food or whatever and she was like it's for her neighbor and she was like okay but she doesn't know it's not really for her neighbor it's for her um we find out what happens later murder and Kishan are um out you know doing their thing they're out and everything and clifford sees the pic on instagram of little murder and Kishan. And he's like looking like, mm hmm. Um, Autumn and Clifford come up with a split, and it's going to be 69%, right? Roulette and Whisper are going to be the headliners. Uncle Clifford is not happy with that because Uncle Clifford has a loyalty to Mercedes, and she's not happy that. Mercedes is kind of being pushed out, but it's, it's good because she wanted to get out anyway, but uncle Clifford doesn't like really like the way that autumn is moving with when it, when it comes to Mercedes, they also say they need another DJ. And so homegirl who was in the back, um, making drinks, um, she's going to be the DJ down at church, Delta Valley, Delta Valley church, Kyle Wayne, he's standing up there talking, talking about the casino, wanting the people to kind of vote yes. And I really thought that, I thought that was against the rules. Like you can't go to a church and uh, politicians aren't supposed to be going to churches asking for votes. I thought that was a rule, but whatever. And that's what, yeah, that's what, what's her name says. She's like, you can't tell parishioners who to vote for. Um, she mentioned Sodom and Gomorrah. She's like, if we, if you get guys get that casino, it's going to be Sodom and Gomorrah down here. She was pissed. They was looking at her like this motherfucking bitch. And it's that man, that other pastor, he, he, he's shifty. Remember how he was treating her? Was that the same man that was treating her like shit last season? I didn't like that man. We see Big Frida. Um, Little Murder performs. I really like that they did it like a video. So he's performing and you see Keyshawn back there on the pole or whatever. But it was like a whole video. It was actually really, really cool. I was like, okay, this is cool. I really like that. Mercedes goes to this um, apartment building. She meets the coach's wife. Her name is Farah. She offers a handshake. Farrah looks down at her. And then, um, what's her name? Says something about it being beautiful. <laughs> she was like, you mean beautiful? <laughs> she makes her sign the NDAs. And that's when she makes a mention, like, you know, um, you know, your husband. She's like, she said, makes a mention, like, your husband, um, my, their husband is, my husband is giving you $10,000 in a condo. 
Um, do you, or you can be his wife and not get nothing out of it. She told her she was getting a lot of, out of the situation. She was like, do you want to trade places? Right. Do you want to be the wife or do you want to be the hooker that gets the $10,000 in the condo for a couple nights, honey? Mercedes says we all host to something, girl. They start, she starts dancing. That's what I love. That's the kind of dancing that I love. I love that her shoulders was, was hurting on the way up. I was like, oh my God. But, um, I was like, oh, she don't fall in these people's house. Um, they had the pole set up. She was dancing to that song by um, Kalani and um, Tiana Taylor. She was getting her. I was loving it. Even the lady was looking up there like, this is amazing. Like, that's one thing I can say you cannot take from these dancers is they are athletes that you bitch. First of all, first of all, you climbing up a pole, right? Using your, your little leg and your leg to put to push you up and your foot and all this other stuff. Then you doing the splits in midair. Then you twirling around. That's athleticism, honey. It is. I don't give a damn what y'all say. I love, I love to see it. And she was, and even the lady, she was like mesmerized by her. So then as she was dancing, baby, her phone started ringing. It's some weird ass ring tone. <laughs> so she jumps off the pole. She stops the, um, the, uh, the call, the phone. I think it was a cop's calling stops the stops the phone from ringing and she goes over and she straddles coach or whatever and then honey you see Farah from the back she coming through and they get busy they had a threesome he was probably happy they was having a threesome on the on the stripper pole platform and then the call comes through again and it's uh the cops saying that Terica has been pulled over so that's what um that's what happened honey um at the club Oh, that's his name. Big Teak. Is that his name? Did I get it right? Big Teak. Um, they said, um, are you managing a little murder? And he was like, no, I'm managing Mississippi. Right. And then they were like, he's not, that's not his girl. And he was like, no, that's not his girl. You know, she likes white boys or whatever. Um, when something drops, you're going to owe me. You're going to own me. What is that? I don't, I don't know what that's from. Andre's on the phone with his wife. She's a doctor, honey. You see how we are. A lot of folks are saying she was a nurse. I was like, mm, she was a doctor. She's a doctor. She's a doctor. Doctor such and such and such and such. Please come in. She's trying to get him to come home. He's saying that the um, will reading of the will has been pushed back. We haven't heard anything about that. Is there a will? Is he lying? Is he lying? Anyway, she's trying to get him a job at his father's firm. And she was like, I need more time. So he's going to stay longer in Chuckaloosa, Chuckalisa. So the call comes from the police to Mercedes. Terica got pulled over. Her, her mother, her stepmother is an alcoholic. She's been drinking, I guess, during the pandemic. She was in the backseat drunk. She got pulled over. She takes her home. Um, the next thing you see is her. Um, spraying her with, you know, water and stuff. And Terika hears basically the story about how her father got with her mom. Her father was a, I don't give a damn. You could tell a 15 year old from a grown ass woman. I don't give a fuck what you say. Cause I was a 15 year old girl before. Okay. I don't give a damn what y'all say. The daddy was a goddamn pet, a pedophile. She talking about he, she lied about her age. I don't give a damn. I'm if what is you thought she was 18 you still a dirty damn dog because you shouldn't mess with if you're not in your teens you don't need to be messing with a teenager and that's just what it is so the whisper song comes on and roulette and whisper are in the back she tells whisper tells roulette she has a little darkness in her she's like that's no shade she explains that, you know, you have to have a little darkness in you so that when the light, when you are experiencing light, you know the difference. Hello, because we are both. We are all and nothing at the same time. Um, she gives her a line, a Coke, a bump of Coke. Um, yeah, when they were getting ready to pray, baby, they was getting ready to pray. And um, girl, one of the one of the dancers sneezes. And that lady started spraying and she was like, girl, this is oil sheen. That was so funny to me. So Clifford kicked, kicked, the, kicked the girl out who was um, who was uh, sneezing. You ain't going to be sneezing up here. We down here with a pandemic. You're not going to be up here sneezing. 
the whisper song is on they dancing they doing their thing it was really good really good set the part that i love the most and i hope they never stop this in p valley is when the girl is up on the pole and you can hear her breathing i love that i love that because it it shows you how much work it takes to be up there. I love the fact that you can hear them breathing in, you know, in the music. That whoever did that, I love that. I said, I hope they don't ever stop doing that because it just, it just shows the wor- amount of work that they do. At the end, because you know, roulette is high as a kite. She ends up taking her shirt off and jumping up and down. She ain't got much, child. She's jumping up and down, showing her titties to everybody. Uncle Clifford is having a heart attack. That's the one thing we don't do. Um, outside Big L is talking to Gidget's boyfriend. I can't remember his name, but Roulette comes out and Whisper comes out. They're all laughing and stuff and they see him and she looks at him and he looks at her and they look like they about to start something, honey. They look like they about to start something. She either going to start working for him or they going to start both fucking and working for him or something. Mercedes is, you know, in the room, in the shower, you know, holding the, the mama off. Her name is Michelle or Shell hosing her off or whatever and she tells her you know about Cortez and her being under 18 and I gotta look at his mistake for the rest of my life how do you think that I feel about that situation she said I begged you guys to give her back I guess Terica didn't hear that part because she the she kept saying I, I begged y'all to give her back and they said no And she said on his deathbed, he was like in his last breath, he was like, no, take care of her forever. Obviously, he didn't think that Mercedes was was ever going to be capable of doing that. Um, And she says, and look at me, I was being loyal to a dead man who wasn't loyal to me when he walked this earth. What did I say? Protect the legacy, protect the image of the man in his death. And to your detriment, to your detriment, you sitting around, give that girl back to her mother. Why would you make a promise to somebody who dishonored your relationship and slept with a child? Like, girl, what? Girl, what? He slept with a child. You stayed married to him because I guess he had money or whatever. And now he says to take care of the child and you keep the promise. I want to get a lady back to her, her mama so fast. She's over there going through it, drunk and everything. Terika heard everything. She tells, is that true? You were only 15. She's like, yeah, but I lied. You see how they straightening that shit up. Yeah, but I lied. I lied. I, I wasn't, I wasn't um 18 or whatever. And she was like, well, why didn't you, you weren't 15 forever. Why didn't you come and get me back? I don't know. I'm like, she did say that she begged for her back and they wouldn't give her back. Um, and she was like, well, what, what judge is going to give a stripper her baby back, you know? Um, and so that was the end of that. And she was like, did you love him? And she was like, yeah. And then she was like, did he love you? And she was like, I don't know, girl. Why didn't you, why didn't you keep me? She's like, because my mom said I had to give you up. I couldn't keep you. And that's when she told her, I wasn't 15, you weren't 15 forever. She let her have it. She let her have it. Um, what's her name? Um, Andre and the brother, what's his name? Col- Corbin. Is that Corbin? Yeah, that's Corbin. They sitting there having a drink, talking about um, what is Autumn going to accept? They offered her a million. She was like, no, she wants $10 million. What if we can get that? Where are the girls going to go? Why are you so worried about where these girls are going to go? Why are you worried about that? Why? She said, one million ain't even the tip. I said, I know that's right. Mm. Andre, he makes a suggestion that he kind of makes a suggestion that, you know, he could run for mayor. And then Corbin says he will back it. I said, oh, shit. He said he didn't like his wife didn't like that he was a registered voter in Chuckalissa, Chuckalissa, and that um, he thought about it. So I don't know if that's going to be a thing. He's going to run for mayor. I don't know. That's going to be crazy. Um, 
Murder, you, they show a scene with Little Murder. They just came back from a performance. They stand in out their hotel room. And uh, Keyshawn opens the door and starts kissing him in, in an effort to get the girls away from him or whatever, to give this illusion that they are together. The manager sees, and he's looking like, what they doing? Like, what's going on? So he's, he's, he's suspicious of something. So inside of the room, they're talking or whatever. She says she has this hair oil. She starts to put in his hair. Um, he has a postcard. He's been sending Clifford postcards from whatever city they're in or whatever. And on the postcard, he put, um, something about a, some, he says something like that was really crazy and, and not Mercedes. Um, Mississippi was like, Keyshawn was like, that's crazy. Don't say no stuff like that. You got to put more into that or whatever. And then he said, I love you. And then he, and then he was like, that's how I really feel. I really feel like that. And uh, Keyshawn was like, well, you know, Uncle Clifford is not somebody that you really want to mess up anything with. That's a good person. Don't, you know, whatever. So he was like, um, I get it. I get it. So he gets, sends the postcard. You see Uncle Clifford got all the postcards around her uh, vanity. Um, what did you do to get kicked out the pink? Right. And then the door knocks. Baby, I thought it was her boyfriend. I was like. But it was Big Teak. So this is um, Little Murder's friend. I guess they did time together. And I guess he deleted somebody for him. Um, so he was put in the hole. And they were reminiscing on how he would send him rap lyrics on a toilet pa- piece of toilet paper. And how he didn't know how the CO got it to them or whatever. And so they were just reminiscing about that. They got into a fight earlier. And the guy said something to the fact like he don't like y'all or something like that. So I don't know if he was gay or something. Maybe they were gay together in in prison. I don't know. Maybe that'll come out later. But anyways, um, he asked him why you don't mess with Keyshawn. And he was like, Keyshawn likes white boys. And he told him, you don't want to start a war with these guys out here. He was like, and, you know, talking about how he's always watched his back or whatever. He said, he said being in the hole was like being in the bottom of the ocean. That's how dark it was. I was like, ooh, that's, mm -mm." um, the mayor gives the mom a citation by saying that her congregation, they're not adhering to the six, the, the six feet distancing, um, the social distancing. So he gives her a citation and she says, uh, she called the damn cop over the sheriff or overseer. (laughs) Maybe I'll tell you. So he's giving her a hard time because she cussed his ass out at that, at, you know, at that thing where he was asking for votes. And she was like, hell no. Anyway, so we see that roulette is out hoeing. OK. And when she gets out of the car. Right, you know, in front of the pink from the back, you see Big L and Gidget's boyfriend moving the Oxycontin bottles, moving them. I don't know. They, I guess they're distributing them around town or whatever. but. She winked like, I see y'all, y'all better put me in on this or else I'm telling everybody that's how it goes. You know how it goes. So that was the end of the episode, y'all. Um, let me think, is there anything that was that room is something in that room? Something's going to happen in that room. It's next week. We see diamond comes back. I guess they're asking for diamond to, you know, cleanse the space. Um, I don't know. And it's, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think something's going to happen in that room. We're going to see. Roulette is a, is bad news. She's bad news. So is Whisper. They bad news. Whisper's not as bad, but that Roulette is. She's doing stuff. She's all, in one episode. She didn't broke three rules. She done suck dick in the back, showed her titties on stage, and then she's at, she's hoeing and then getting getting dropped off in front of the pink. You break. She's breaking every rule. Anyways, y'all. Let me know what y'all think of the episode. Did I miss anything? Um, Let me know. Take care of each other and protect your energy. Peace.